Hi guys, in today's video I'm going to share with you my chicken bone broth recipe also how I decided or discovered or rediscovered chicken bone broth and why I'm drinking it so if you don't want to hear my short history with uh, chicken bone broth you can skip to this time right over here and this is where the actual recipe is gonna start so I think about two years three years maybe ago I started having really bad joint pain just in my knees nowhere else just in the knees it got to the point where I, when I get up in the morning I was like an old machine it took me 10 minutes to kind of get moving and get out of bed and be myself so somebody suggested I start taking glucosamine pills so I started taking glucosamine and it worked like magic. I have nothing against glucosamine. Uh, the only problem I have with it, and it helped my joints stop hurting, uh, I would say in about day five. You have to be consistent, however, you have to take it all the time. So I was taking it for a while, for about a year and a half. And uh, the only problem I have with it, the, the pills are just huge. But other than that, it worked really good. However, for those of you who have known me for a while now, you know I'm like taking pills. So I started researching the internet for natural sources of glucosamine, not even knowing what exactly I was looking for. I came across a video and that really opened my eyes because I thought that, you know, my knees are hurting just because I'm getting colder, you know, you go past the mid-30s and things start to not work properly. And that was a real eye-opener, because what happened is, I'm gonna try and explain it really quickly, I will put the link to the actual video down in the description section, because I'm not a doctor. But what happened is, let's say with your knee, so you have joint between the bones of your knee, and if you had an injury, like if you do sports or something, and that white stuff between the cartilage, between the bones cracked, the body starts to create antibodies that go there, and I don't know what they do, but they could cause inflammation. And what the glucosamine pills do is, when you take the glucosamine pill, it's not like it's going to your joints and fixes the problem, it's actually a decoy. So the antibodies detect cartilage somewhere else so they leave your joints and go to take care of that cartilage over there so that gives your joints uh, the opportunity and the time to heal so in that same video by dr burke i discovered chicken bone broth about six months maybe five five or six months ago i stopped taking just cold turkey i stopped taking glucosamine and i waited for a few days to see if the pain is going to come back it did so I started drinking the chicken bone broth and it's been uh, six months now and I'm not taking glucosamine, I'm just drinking my chicken bone broth. It works perfect for me, it may not work for everybody. I heard that if that cartilage between the joints is completely worn out and you have basically bone on bone, this is where you get into knee replacement surgeries and hip replacement surgeries and all that. But for someone like me that uh, I did sports, I never did get injured, but uh, I'm a very clumsy person and I was a clumsy kid playing with boys, climbing trees, climbing rooftops, and I fell a lot. So I'm assuming that this is, uh, this is where my problem comes from. So, oh, in order to make your chicken, you see, I just hit my knee again. In order to make your chicken bone broth, I prefer the slow cooker. You can do pressure cooker, it's only gonna take two hours. However, I'm scared of pressure cookers. I feel like it's gonna explode, it's gonna hurt me, it's gonna hurt someone else, it's gonna destroy my kitchen. Chicken bone broth, you just put it there and you forget about it for 48 hours. And speaking of 48 hours, when I first started making chicken bone broth, I was uh, cooking it for 24 hours. But here, guys, you can see the difference. These two are frozen because I keep them in the freezer. But this is chicken bone broth that I cooked for 24 hours. This is chicken bone broth that I cooked for 48 hours. And you can see the difference. And I used about the same ingredients. So you can see the difference in color. So I would recommend cooking it for 48 hours if you can uh, spare the time. Although there is nothing you have to do. You basically put your stuff there and you let it cook. A couple of things before I get to the recipe. Some people put apple cider vinegar, I saw this on the internet, they put apple cider vinegar because supposedly it extracts more minerals out of the bones, which I don't believe to be the truth. 
And to be honest with you, when you cook vinegar for 24 hours, it doesn't give a very good flavor to the bone broth. At least I don't like it. Another thing people put is garlic. I did it once and I ruined a whole batch because it, when you cook garlic for 24 hours or 48 hours, it gives the, the, the bone broth bitter taste. So if you want to add any of those, you can add it later once it's cooked and you warm it up in the cup. You can add some apple cider vinegar because actually apple cider vinegar helps with the absorption of the collagen in, in the cartilage from the bone broth. Now with that said, speaking of minerals, I always like to add about a tablespoon of either Celtic salt or Himalayan salt because these two, each one of them has somewhere in a range of 80 some to 90 some minerals. So that's a good way to add minerals to your bone broth. So when I drink it, I don't really taste that tablespoon of salt. So a lot of times I would add a few more crystals of either Celtic or Himalayan salt. Another thing that it's mandatory for me to put, just because I absolutely love the flavor, it's bay leaf. I put about five or six leaves of bay leaf, but these are my, my musts for the chicken bone broth. And then of course you need your bones. And I use, you will see now in the video, but I buy chicken legs, whole chicken leg, and then I bake it, I take the meat out, and I use the bones. So with that said, enjoy the recipe. And just a little side note here, yesterday I was at the grocery store and I saw in the freezer section chicken bone broth, which was $9.99 for 24 ounces. Just to give you a perspective, 24 ounces is about 0.18 gallons or 0.71 liters, so it is very expensive to buy it from the grocery store. So I start by baking the chicken legs at 425 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 to 50 minutes. Once the chicken legs are done baking, I take them out of the tray, let them cool down, and I remove all the meat from the bones. And these are all the bones that I have left, and these are actually enough for two badges of chicken bone broth. And this white stuff at the end of the bone is the cartilage that it's actually so good for your joints. In the meantime, I'm also saving all the juices that I have left from baking the chicken legs and I will explain why. Then I'm going to put the container in the refrigerator for a few hours to separate the grease from the liquid. Now, inside the bones you have bone marrow, which is also really good for you. However, it is a very small amount, but if you wish to use it, you can crack the bones in a half. It does make a bit of a mess, but if you have the time, you can do it. So right over here, you can see the bone marrow that I'm uh, scraping out of the bone. Another problem you may run into it if breaking the bones is that you're going to have to double and triple strain your bone broth to make sure that there are no small pieces of bone left in it. And as you can see, after a few hours, the fat has separated from the liquid. So I'm going to scrape the fat and I'm going to use it for the next few days to make my eggs in it. And then the rest of the liquid I will put in the chicken bone broth because it's super rich in collagen. Then add your bones, well not your bones, the chicken bones. Add about a tablespoon of either Himalayan salt or Celtic sea salt. Add about seven or eight bay leaves and then parsley clippings that I have saved from before, some fresh parsley, and if you have, don't have fresh parsley, you can definitely add dry parsley, and then a couple of carrots, some celery clippings, bell peppers, a teaspoon of turmeric, and a teaspoon of dry oregano, another teaspoon of thyme leaves, and about half a teaspoon of cayenne pepper which helps with digestion and also half an onion and if you grow your onions at home or if you buy organic onions you don't have to peel the skin and then top it off with water good filtered water and close the lid and because i'm not going to be home for part of the cooking just to be safe between the slow cooker and the countertop i'm adding a cutting board and then i'm going to set the slow cooker to high and i'm going to keep the slow cooker on high just for a few hours until the chicken bone broth starts bubbling just as such so this is seven hours later at this point I'm gonna stir it a little bit and I'm gonna turn it down to low. So at this point my chicken bone broth has been cooking for about 24 hours so I'm gonna stir it a little bit and I'm gonna tap it off with water again and again clean filtered good water. And now at this point the chicken bone broth has been cooking for 48 hours and you can see the difference between 24 and 48 so it looks really good so I'm gonna turn it off and let it sit for a little while. And in order to speed up the cooling 
boiling process, I am going to take everything out of the chicken bone broth and I'm going to transfer it to a new container. And because it's getting late at night, I'm going to put the chicken bone broth and a bed of ice. This way it's only going to take about 15 or 20 minutes for it to cool down. So I can start pouring it into the mason jars. So the chicken bone broth, it's now at room temperature, so I can start pouring it into the mason jars. And that should make about, oh, I would say maybe four or five jars. And as you can see, I'm not filling them all the way to the top. And here in a second, you will see why. And this is chicken bone broth that has been in the freezer for about a week now. And you can see how the liquid expands up. So if you fill up the jar all the way to the top, it will explode. And here is even a closer look so you can see how much it expands up. And I do store my chicken bone broth in the freezer until I'm ready to use it. Uh, either for cooking or to drink it. And if I want to drink it, I just pour a cup. I put it in the microwave for about one minute. Add some Himalayan or Celtic salt and enjoy it. I hope you guys enjoyed this recipe. And if I missed anything and you have any questions, please put them in the comment section below. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if this is your first time visiting my channel, please subscribe. Cheers. Mm -hmm.